let's talk about colorism. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very different but interesting topic and I want to give a shout out to Colors Champion. She gave me this idea the other day and it was interesting because I never really thought about this until she commented. I thought about it and I was like, this would be a great topic because this is something I've seen a lot when it comes to Aliyah and I'm going to talk about it what it has to do with Aliyah's career, right? But then I'm gonna tie it in as a whole with all the black female artists in the industry, you know? Topic is colorism. And the thing with Aliyah is, one of the things, you know, people always say, oh, you only like Aliyah because she died. You only like Aliyah because she died. Oh, if she was still alive, she would be like this, like, whatever, right? But another thing people say is, oh, y'all only like Aliyah because she was light-skinned and pretty. Not just pretty, but she was light-skinned and pretty. That's the thing where it's like, you gotta add that light skin to it. Like people always say, oh, if she was dark skin, nobody would really like her. If she was dark skin, y'all wouldn't go this far for her. Oh, if she was dark skin, y'all wouldn't care about her that much. Basically like, because Aaliyah's death was tragic, right? Right. But people put the emphasis on her being light skin and pretty. Not just pretty, like I said, light skin and pretty. That's why people was like, it feel it was like a deeper, it's like a deeper sadness because it was like, oh my God, the light-skinned pretty singer died, right? Not just the pretty singer, the light-skinned pretty singer died. People who were like, who say they were old enough to remember Aaliyah when she was alive, like they were teenagers, a lot of them say, oh, Aaliyah only made it so far because she was light-skinned. Basically saying all her success that she had was to blame because of her skin tone, right? And this effect, let's talk about it. Colorism. The definition of colorism is prejudice or discrimination against individuals with a dark skin tone, typically among people of the same ethnic or racial group. Then the example used is colorism within the black community has been a serious emotional and psychological battle, which is definitely true. And in this case, the argument I'm trying to argue against is that colorism, because in a sense, colorism could even benefit you if you're lighter skin, or it can hurt you if you're darker skin. In this case, a lot of people try to say colorism in a way benefited Aaliyah because she was so lighter skin and that's what helped push her image and her career and her success. And I'm like, my answer to that is no. Did colorism affect Aaliyah and it benefited her? No. Now, let me talk about it. Colorism existed long before even some of our grandparents were born, right? And that's been in the music industry and many industries, film industry, a lot of different industries, just in life. If you want to go on a job interview, you know, you know what I'm saying? But did colorism personally affect Aaliyah in a way to where it benefited her success and her career? I don't think so. Let's talk about how, to me, Aaliyah wasn't even light skin. Now, she was lighter skin but she was on a spectrum. You know what I'm saying? I felt like she, Aaliyah, to me, now this is my opinion, let me know what y'all think. Aaliyah was brown skin, but she had like a honey, she had like a honey skin tone, a honey brown skin tone. You know what I'm saying? Like, depending on the lighting, she could even look light skin. Like, you see how she looks in my shirt? She could even look light skin, or she could have a more brown skin tone where it's like a little darker. And the perfect examples of that, for example, is y'all ever notice? Y'all ever watch Aaliyah's music videos? And y'all see how in some videos she looks real light skin, and in other videos she looks brown, and then even in some videos she looks dark skin. Like she almost looks my skin tone. And the perfect examples of that is look at the Are You That Somebody video. You didn't know if that was your first time seeing Aaliyah, you would think she was dark skin, right? Or brown skin at best. But you look at Try Again. Scenes in one in a million. You look at the beginning of More Than a Woman, she looks light skinned. Why? That's because she had the light gleaming on her. So that's going to get, she had that type of skin tone tint where if the light was bright, she would look light like this. But if it was a little dimmer, she would have like a honey skin tone, honey brown complexion, you know? So that's the first thing. I don't even think Ali was light skinned. I think she was in the middle between light and dark. But the lighting, whatever lighting she had on an interview or a video or a picture, that affected 
the skin tone that came across when the pictures and the interviews came out, you know? So that's the first thing. Second thing is, it's sad but true, but a lot of people think, a lot of people think dark-skinned people are less attractive than light-skinned people. That's just a fact. Like, it's, we can't even argue against that. that. That's just the truth of it all. Whether you're famous or not, a lot of people find dark-skinned people less attractive than lighter skin people and that's just what it is with this and that does i'm not saying it doesn't it does play effect in an artist's career specifically female artists you know black female artists in this industry over the last 100 200 years you know what i'm saying it goes that far that plays a huge part in a black female artist's success but i don't think that's what it was in alia's case because first of all you think about it, when alia first came out she always wore she always wore sunglasses and she had like a brown she had like a brown skin complexion you know you could tell like she wasn't dark skin but she had like a brown skin complexion and she always wore baggy clothes and it's not like Aaliyah when she first came out she wasn't dolled up she had baggy clothes she always wore sunglasses bandanas hats you know what I'm saying people fell in love with Aaliyah's voice you know that was the main thing people fell in love with her voice then as she started coming out, you saw the videos, people was like, oh, you know, people thought she was pretty. Some people thought she was pretty. She had the tomboy swag. One in a million era, she had like a mix of both. She started shedding some of those layers of like the tomboyish clothes. And then she started having more like that, you know, the girly look. But she incorporated both. By 2001, the Alia era, self-titled, that's when she became more glammed up. She started wearing dresses, started wearing outfits, designer collections. She started wearing makeup. You know, she had those eyebrows she was known for. She had the, you know, sometimes she would wear hair extensions and sometimes she would wear like lighter contacts in her eyes. And it is, it was what it was. But the, to say that, oh, people only fell in love with Aaliyah for her look. Of course, people thought she was, Aaliyah was gorgeous. People thought she was pretty. But at the end of the day, as time has shown, as the music industry has shown, you could be as pretty as the biggest top model in the world. But if people not with your music, then you're not going to go so far in your career. If the radio not with your music, you're not going to go so far in your career. If it's come time for you to perform live or to perform on stage, you know what I'm saying, and you whack, people are not going to really mess with you. You know, some people talk about her live performances, but overall, she had a few shaky ones who didn't, which artists didn't. But overall, people loved Aaliyah's artistry. They loved her voice. They loved her vocals. They loved the producers she worked with. They loved Aaliyah's sound. And each album, her sound evolved and got more interesting, to say the least. So to say that, oh, Aaliyah's career, people only love Aaliyah for her features and her skin tone, and, oh, Aaliyah was dark skin, like, if Aaliyah was dark skinned like Dupita Nyong'o, she wouldn't have made it so far. Now, that's a theory. Nobody would know if that's true. Nobody would know if that's true. That's just a theory. But I've seen that many times where people say, oh, if Aaliyah was dark skinned, people wouldn't care about her this much. Even people say that if Aaliyah was dark skinned, people wouldn't care about her back then and people wouldn't still care about her now. Like if she was Kelly Rowland's complexion or Lupita Nyong'o's complexion, she would not be as talked about and so celebrated today you know and people wouldn't say oh I love Aaliyah I love Aaliyah it wouldn't be such a big thing with her as people say people wouldn't overhype her that's the thing oh if she was light skinned if she wasn't light skinned she wouldn't get so much hype all this time later I'm like the bottom line is that people loved Aaliyah's voice of course she had a, she had the image she had the look but she also had the talent she also had the voice she brought something different to the music industry and people loved her artistry that's just point blank period that's the end of it now bringing it to another thing in another case to dispute that claim you know how when Aaliyah's name is always brought up in an argument and people say Brandy and Monica was doing better than her which in a way they was all doing great but Brandy did have the upper hand because she had Moesha and she had all these endorsement deals and Aaliyah didn't really get into things like that until 2000s Brandy was darker than Aaliyah she had a darker skin tone than Aaliyah if, the, if colorism was supposed to benefit Aaliyah how was Brandy so much more successful right like the way people say it people say that all the time oh y'all didn't like Aaliyah because she was light skinned I've seen that a lot of times but I'm like y'all also would say oh Brandy was doing better than her Brandy was darker than her 
she had a darker skin tone. So where's the correlation? Where's it's not making sense? It's not matching up. Y'all saying, oh, Aaliyah's skin tone benefited her. But then in, in that case, how did Brandy become so successful? That's what I'm trying to say. People people just put their own insecurities on Aaliyah. I'm not saying what, but in some way it's like, why are you mentioning Aaliyah being light skinned and pretty? Like, like I said, colorism does exist, it did exist, and it still does exist in the music industry. But for you, for people to say that in Aaliyah's case, now, being light skinned or being lighter skinned than your peers in the music industry, that might affect you in some way. Some people might think you're prettier than this one. Some people might think you're prettier than that one, whatever. But like I said, it all comes down to the music. The music is the main thing. If your music is whack, you're not going to get that far in your career. That's just the end of it. And sometimes it has to do with marketing and how much money and time and how much your music label invests in you. That's another thing. And it's crazy because I even seen people people consider artists like Ashanti and Sierra light skin. And I'm just like, do y'all know what light skin is? Like to me, light skin is like Chris Brown complexion. Light skin is like Taraji B. Henson complexion. Light skin is like Cassie's complexion. You know the singer Cassie? But people just throwing around light skin and I'm like, brown skin exists. Brown skin does exist, where it's like that middle spectrum, and depending on you know, you can be on the lighter side of it or the darker side of it. I feel like Aaliyah was right in the middle. The ways colorism did exist and did affect artists, I would have to say Beyonce and Kelly Rowland. Now, in a way, not, we're not even talking about talent-wise because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Beyonce is a better technical singer, Beyonce has more stage presence, but I'm talking about when Destiny's Child because I see, you go on a lot of Destiny's Child videos and performances, and you'll see people say, oh, Kelly has so much talent. She has so much stage presence. Oh, you even say in certain parts, oh, Kelly did better than Beyonce here. And then another thing I noticed is that a lot of people, I looked at a lot of comments under their videos. A lot of people would say, oh, back then, I was only paying attention to Beyonce, but Kelly is pretty. Kelly is the prettiest one to me. I didn't pay attention to her because Beyonce was always put in the forefront. You know, the light-skinned one with the blonde hair. And Kelly was the darkest skin one. She had the short hair, sometimes it was red or whatever. And she was just like the, you know, the second hand man. She was like the sidekick. And a lot of people didn't pay attention to her. But as we got older, people of my generation and older, they was like, oh, Kelly was bad. You know, Kelly was, Kelly looked good, but the attention was put on Beyonce. And it's just, that's not to say that Beyonce or Kelly is less talented than one or the other, but the, I, the thing is, colorism did play an effect in that because, I mean, come on, let's be honest. How successful would Destiny's Child have been if Kelly was the lead singer? You never know. Talking about light-skinned singers that colorism did help out, I'm going to have to say Cassie. And I'm going to shout out the channel Black Femininity TV. She did a whole video about this on Cassie and her success in her career and why she eventually you know kind of fell off and a lot, and a lot of things to do with this cassie was beautiful right she was pretty but she didn't have the best voice she didn't have the best songs and she didn't have the best stage presence and the thing is your looks can only take you so far in this industry and cassie was an example of that you know she had good music and eventually she found her sound as an artist i think but look at that video i just posted up here Cassie is an example of colorism helping her out because she was nice and pretty and P. Diddy wanted to push her like, look, she's gorgeous, look at her. But after a while, people were just like, she, this is not it, you know what I'm saying? Like, she had that look, but she didn't have the sound. She didn't have the stage presence. That's an example of colorism, you know, benefiting her in a way. But if it benefits you in that way, it can only take you so far. Aaliyah, in Aaliyah's case, that wasn't the case. And then even now today, you have artists like Jasmine Sullivan, Fantasia, Jennifer Hudson, and even recently, Tiana Taylor, where a lot of people say, oh, colorism, colorism, it's because they're darker, you know, nobody pays them no attention. If there was lighter skin, like Beyonce and Rihanna and such, and Rihanna, I don't think Rihanna's light skin, she's in that middle thing to me too, like that brown skin category, but people say, oh, the darker skin artists that say real R&B, they don't get enough attention, they don't get the marketing, a lot of people don't like them because they're darker skin. And the thing with that is, 
in a way, it, that does play into it. It's like, at the end of the day, I realize not everyone, not every artist is meant to be a global superstar. Not everyone is meant to make it to a Rihanna or Beyonce level status. Some are just meant to have an audience in their core genre. And that is what it is. Not everybody is meant to be a global superstar on that level. Sad to say, but that's just the reality of the music industry. Not everyone is meant to be that type of artist. Not everyone is set up to be that type of artist. Speaking of things like that, it does make you wonder. Doja Cat, she's another. She's a light-skinned artist that just came out. She's had success. She had these big hits, big songs. But it makes you wonder. Her song, like Say So, right? If Tiana Taylor was to take a Doja Cat song, sing it, perform it, and do it the same way Doja Cat did, would that have been such a hit? Would it have been so popular? Would the video have over 100 million views? Tiana Taylor, right? She would have made the same type of songs Doja Cat made. Would she have that same success? Does it have to do with the look? That's a, that's a great question, right? Colorism does play a part in the music industry, but I feel like in certain cases it's easy to see where it is, in certain cases it's not. And with Aaliyah's case, of course, people thought she was pretty and she was on a lighter skin spectrum, but that can only get you so far and that only will get you so far. It comes down to your talent, your likability, your personality, and your marketability and your artistry. And if people gravitate towards you and people gravitated towards Aaliyah, which is why she was so popular back then and she's still so popular 20 years later, today. So I do not think colorism played a part in how much success Aaliyah had. Your music has to stick. It has to, you have to find an audience. You have to find an audience that will stay loyal to you and buy your music. You know what I'm saying? Like Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, she's a white artist. But over time, she has been able to find her audience. And you know, that has a lot to do with it too. Same goes with Ariana Grande and Billie Eilish. All of them, they have that worldwide appeal where they've been able to find the audience and people stick towards them and they can dibble dabble in different genres and get away with it and sell millions of records and sell out tours. Like I said, not every artist is meant to be on that level. It's sad to say, but that's just the reality of the music industry. Because you have artists like Hallie and Chloe, Normani, and Seven Streeter, right? They're all darker skin, on the darker skin side some brown skin but you know they do pop songs but they never really take off they haven't really taken off and in their case you think colorism has something to do with it but it also has to do with them and their music and their artistry really finding that mainstream audience that's going to stay loyal to them that's going to buy records that's going to make them go platinum double platinum on that mainstream wide scale level you know so anyways, guys, that was just my take on the whole colorism argument, especially in the case of Aaliyah, where people try to use colorism as a scapegoat for Aaliyah's success because Aaliyah was lighter skin, you know? I don't agree with that. Do y'all agree with me? Why or why not? Do y'all think colorism played a part in Aaliyah's career? Why or why not? Colorism is a big issue in the music industry, and it does play a major part of an artist's success, especially black women in the industry. But... I feel like that's not the case for every artist. Because you have stars like Hallie and Chloe and Normani that's fighting to get to that mainstream pop level. And then you have artists like Lizzo and Megan Thee Stallion, who even though their style and their music is a little different, they're making it to that mainstream level. And they're not the lightest, you know? So let's, you know, this, this, this is going to be a really interesting discussion because colorism is a really tricky and sensitive topic for a lot of people. So let's talk about it down below in the comments. Let's get this discussion going. Y'all know I'm going to reply back to everybody. And let me say thank you again to Colors Champion for giving me this idea because this is a real prominent topic that, you know, a lot of people shy away from talking about. But I want to talk about it down below. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.